So hi, Jared. Hello, how are you doing? Good, Great. we are here on the uh, Audio Design Desk booth, right? Yes, the Audio Design Desk. We are a brand new DAW that we built from the ground up using the modern advancements of AI and machine learning to uh, help us not only identify sounds, but to place them and then sync them to video as fast as lightning, faster than anything else before. Great, so you've got a bit of a, a kind of, uh, a, uh, a bit of a, a show to give us, right? Yes, yes. Uh, a bit of a show is probably a little bit of an understatement. We're I've, gonna se do, I've seen. We're I've gonna seen have you. a whole movie here. Yeah, for I've us. seen. I've seen you doing this just a second ago, and it was very <laughs> impressive. So yeah, okay. I'm, I'm excited to see how it goes down. All right, so let's just jump right into it. Let's say uh, in this use case, our video editor just sent us a clip of the uh, that they cut together of the film Sleepy Hollow. It's a fight scene across a bridge. And as soon as we import it into Audio Design Desk, it recognizes that the video editor actually put in markers in their video editing software saying, let's start with an ambience nighttime or a hit here or a transition there. Now, just like any other system, we can bring those in as comment markers, but we can also bring them in as audio markers. And then just by clicking audio, it's auto-populating my entire timeline with audio related to what was written in those markers. Now, we're going to play through it, and uh, it might be a little rough because the markers were pretty general, but let's see how close we got. All right, I'm just going to stop it right there. It was decent, but I see there's a lot of synthetic stuff, a lot of uh, stutters coming through, so we're going to clean it up a little bit. And now, to clean it up, the first thing I want to do is I want to change this rise. Now, I'm going to bring open our magic marker here, and then when I open it, you see that I can cycle through a list of similarly related rises, or I can uh, get really specific. I could say, this is a horror film, and we want this to be very intense. And then I can select a rise, I can preview it, and I could say, you know what, that one sounds great, we're gonna press return, and it's now on my timeline. And it's that easy to replace things. All I have to do is select a region, press Command R, and I've got a new one of the same type in the exact same place. And that's because part of this AI system we created is a sonic intelligence that understands what sounds are. Instead of saying that's a waveform, it says those are footsteps, that's a rise, that's a hit. And in doing so, it's able to apply these sync markers to the, uh, to the sounds to help align it with the film. So, if I were to click this rise here, you see at the end of it here, that's the sync marker. It knows that a rise is building up to a frame. Transitions, the sync marker is going to be in the center because you're going from one frame to another. Hits, it's going to be at the beginning because you're emphasizing that frame. Now, using that, we can then uh, go back and say, you know what, the whole project is horror, and the entire project is very intense. So let's just go ahead, select all of our sound design, press Command R, and now we have an entire sound design pass of intense horror sounds. Awesome. I thought that did incredible. Just a, by purely guessing horror and intensity, it was able to find sound design elements that work great for this scene. So now that we've got the sound design pass, and I did some light mixing there as we were listening to it in real time, we can uh, go through and do the Foley. Foley takes the longest. If you haven't done any of your own Foley, the way it works is you got to go find a stem of Foley footsteps, you got to bring them in, chop them up into elements, sync them manually. If you don't like it, you delete it, you start over, you lose hours if not days working on Foley. But in the bottom left corner over here now, we have this triggers window that we created. In the triggers window, you'll see I have one through zero. That's the one through zero keys at the top of my QWERTY keyboard. So I click the six trigger here, and you notice that I dragged a bunch of individual sword clashes onto that trigger. That means that when I go into my timeline, if I press the six key, I get an individual sword clash placed right there at that moment in the timeline. So now, I can go back to the beginning, scrub through, find exactly where there are swords clash, press six for the sword clash, I have sword whooshes on four, and I've got guys grunting on five. That's already a significantly faster way of applying Foley than anything we've been doing in the past. But since Audio Design Desk is all about saving you time, we can actually go faster because we are able to not only create but perform our Foley in real time by pressing the number keys at the top of our keyboard. <laughs> Awesome, and just like that, we did all of the Foley for this scene. 
But we'll, <laughs> tons of folly. Let's tons go now. Of, tons Look at of all folly. that. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how much you did in that tiny. In just time. seconds, we were able to get all that done. But you know what, we'll be honest. Maybe it's not 100% right off the bat. One thing I noticed is that the sword clashes and the sword whooshes were a little loud in the mix. So we've created this content aware timeline that understands the difference between all these sounds. All I have to do is go to my select drop down. I can go to subtype, select sword hit sword here. And if I press shift down three times, you see all of my sword clashes and the entire project are now down six decibels. I can then do that with my sword whooshes. And I'm gonna actually bring those down eight. And then uh, my vocalizations I thought were a little loud too. So let's bring those down. And great. Now I have some light mixing in my Foley. I have my sound design pass with some light mixing as well. The last thing we want to do is we want to add some music to tie it all together. And that's just as simple as everything else. All we have to do is press the Z key. I now have music here. We can play it and we can replace it in real time while auditioning several different music cues. And maybe that's the cue we want. But for me personally, since this is a major motion picture, we want to create an original score. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to leave it horror, I'm going to leave it intense. We're going to say the music's also cinematic and the music's also got to be organic. Now we can open up our trigger pad here. We have beat, bass, chord, line, lead, all the essential elements of music we could ask for. And we're just going to drop in a beat. Let's play it. We'll bring it up in the mix a little bit. Okay, that's great. I think that's a good start. We just need more percussion. Maybe more percussion. Perfect. I love the way that that sounds. Our percussion section is coming together for our orchestral score. But you'll notice as I was bringing those regions in and as I was replacing them, they were staying in time with each other. That's because with all of our music regions, and in fact, any region that has any BPM metadata or tonality metadata, we are time stretching them as well as pitch shifting them to match with each other. That way, we can create scores on the fly without having to worry about them syncing up either in key or on, uh, on the beats with each other. So let's finish off this score by adding some bass. I like that one. Maybe let's also add a line now to get some high-end orchestra. Oh, I love it. I think this score is working out great. So let's now grab all of our music regions. We're gonna trim it to match with this rise here. We're gonna go back to the beginning. We'll exit out of our trigger pad. We'll unmute this and we'll play it. And this is everything we've created in this uh, short amount of time right here for you. <laughs> Wow. All right, just Very like that. It's as yeah. easy as it could be. Now we get, we're ready to export this uh, either to our favorite DAW to finish the mix and master or to our favorite NLE to continue editing or send back to our director for some edits. So, and then, um, yep, we, we're compatible with everything up here. Premiere, Audition, Logic, Final Cut, DaVinci, uh, Pro Tools, Media Composer, Studio One, it's all there. Brilliant. So obviously, you've spent the last week essentially doing the same thing right right i mean last like three days just probably done it like 200 times so i'm a little faster at this so point. <laughs> so as a new user coming in how how is there a steep learning curve to the software or do you think it's kind of it's pretty intuitive if you've used the doors before yeah if you if you've used daws before this is very intuitive uh, actually, if, even if you haven't used a DAW, if you used any sort of NLE, this is very intuitive. I would uh, I say that a, a lot of our uh, UI and key commands are a blend somewhere between like Pro Tools and Premiere with a little bit of logic in there. So as long as you've seen any one of those or worked with them, a lot of this is going to come naturally. You're going to know what you want to look for right off the bat. But uh, since the Foley part is generally the most impressive, and I have done this a lot, there is, a, there is a nice feature where if you just press the L key, you can play through the video at one third speed. And then you can, you know, you can uh, add your Foley in here as they're slowly clashing. Or you can press L again and now you're at half speed. So then you can get all of your Foley placed like that. You don't have to do it in real time. But uh, again, that's why we say it takes just a little bit of practice. And I have uh, these triggers set up in a way that's intuitive for me. So in my right hands, 
I like to keep diegetic sounds in my left hand, I like to keep non-diegetic sounds, but that's the great thing about customized triggers, you get to set them up the way you like, and then you get to perform your laptop like it's a piano while creating all of these sounds as fast as possible. And is it easy to, uh, to change those, instead of using keys for example, could you use a MIDI controller or something? Absolutely, so that's uh, why in our triggers window we do have this keyboard up here. You can, you can assign sounds to a key, so there's C3, we could go up here, and now every time I press C3 on my MIDI keyboard, I'm going to get one of these sword clashes. Brilliant. So um, is the software, it's obviously available now. Um, yes. Uh, what is the kind of price point that we're aiming at? Sorry, what was what the, the price of, of the software? Oh, the, the price. So there's a, there's a few different models and a few different prices. So if you want the professional perpetual model, uh, that is $600. That's the software plus the library. Because this whole time, we've been using our own library of a little over 50,000 sounds. I wouldn't be surprised if we're like 80,000 by the end of the year because we add new sounds every single week to keep things from getting stale and to uh, just keep giving every user new and new sounds. Uh, so that's the $600 one. If you uh, want to go a subscription route, there is a, uh, a yearly for $300. There's also a monthly for $30 a month. And uh, those are all totally royalty-free sounds. You don't have to worry about any of that. But if you want to go a little cheaper, if you don't plan to make any money off of this, if you're just doing this for like soccer games or wedding videos or non-monetized YouTube videos, you can go the personal route, which is half off across the board. So if you wanted to use your own samples. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Great question. I think it is probably our number one question. We have this importer over here that I just brought up. And in this importer, you can drag in a bunch of your own sounds. And there's a machine learning element to this that we've been teaching it. So I would say it's going to get roughly 80% of your total metadata correct. You might have to clean up a few things here or there. But once you clean those things up, the next time you drag in sounds, it's going to get even closer to 100%. Closer and, and closer. And you can, uh, obviously, you get all the same benefit because of that machine learning algorithm as you would with all of your own. Yes. Yeah, brilliant. And then, uh, and then once you say import to library, you can then use your sounds interchangeably with ours, or you can specifically only use your sounds. Amazing. Well, Jared, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Have a great day.